So, uh, I, I only bring you to speak slowly because someone is Italian. Okay, they, we, we have the translation, but we, we try to to be clear to everyone, even if uh, they don't understand very gotcha. well English. Okay, thank you so much. So, are you happy to have these guys here? Okay, take your chance for your questions. If you want to send in the line and start the conversation, or if you want to start by yourself, do whatever you want. This stage is yours, okay? Oh. <laughs> so, yeah, fire away. Any questions you have? Ah, I can see now. There you go. Um, so, yeah, please ask us any questions you want. Um, yeah. You can help us because this is our first time. How does this work? <laughs> what do you like to do? Who's asking you? Yeah. We ask you that question. Okay. Carney, I'm from the show Penny Dreadful. <laughs> uh, I'm Graham McTavish and I'm from a show called Outlander. <laughs> and I'm Sam Hewan and I'm also from. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is logic, I guess. <laughs> Hi, Sam. Um, I'm one of your Hugh Higgins. I think we're up to 20,000 now. Wow. Thank you. Thank you. Amazing. And I must tell you that since I'm from Indiana, which is the Hoosier state, we also have a group that's called Hewan's Hoosier Hughes. <laughs> Yeah. Try saying that after a few whiskeys. <laughs> um, my question is, do any of you disagree with the writers about some of the things your characters do or say in the sense of saying, I'm supposed to say this, but I don't feel that this is what my character is saying? Good question. Yeah, good question. I, mean, I don't know how you guys feel. We um, working with an American uh, team of writers and producers and I think they work slightly differently to, to UK ones. I think the writer has a lot more power in, in American TV. Um, but we're, we're very fortunate about you guys, but we do have quite a collaborative process. Uh, we talk to the writers a lot. Um, and also we're lucky we have source material from Diana Galvin's books, so we can go back to the books. Um, so it does feel very collaborative and uh, Certainly, before we start shooting, um, we can sit down with the writers and go through certain scenes. And especially in uh, season one, we did a lot of um, uh, a lot of rehearsal on some scenes as well. So uh, it's great to be part of that. Um, do you guys have the same? Yeah, for for me, I'm Penny Treadful, um our writer, creator, showrunner is a guy named John Logan, who uh, has written films. Uh, you may have seen some of them, The Aviator. Uh, the Gladiator, uh, Hugo, Skyfall, different things. So um, I, I feel this is sort of his baby, Penny Dreadful, more than maybe anything else he's been a part of, I think, because he really is in total control and he's been, you know, dreaming of, of these characters in different scenarios for so many years. So I do feel like we're in incredibly good hands with someone like John Logan. And so I feel very lucky because really everything off the page, I, it, it, it just feels right for my character, so I've never had a problem with that. Um, but yeah, I, yeah, I imagine in some situations it might not always be the case, so I feel very lucky for that. Do you find that they, they adapt to like how your character talks? Yeah, over the, the that's time? true. You know, I think that they do start to get a feel for each of the actors and what they're bringing to the particular character, I assume for you guys too, and so, you know, when you get into second, third, and more seasons, uh, I think it does, uh, hey folks, it's like a similar relationship between the actor, the character, and the writer, and all Italy. of it is working together to build something um, that's growing. Hopefully. Yeah, they're, they, they're pretty receptive on our show as well. Um, and, you know, we've turned out quite a few episodes, and we've surpassed 100 this year, and it's like after a while they really get to... I mean, they really know your voice and, and the kind of choices you make as an actor, so they help you in that. But but generally, if there is some sort of sticking point, they're, they're pretty open to, to adjusting that. Thank you. Thank you.
Lady in red. My question is, uh, which was the most uh, physical demanding scene you had to shoot in your uh, stories? Physically demanding. <laughs> well, Sam has some... Well, <laughs> Sam has some different demands made on me physically than I do. Yes, yes. <laughs> yes. Well, please, let's talk about that. <laughs> we have to. You may have a similar problem. Oh, yeah? Woo! Oh, I have You have a you should get together and do that. Right? <laughs> yes, yeah, so, I mean, they can be demanding those scenes. <laughs> uh, and in fact, you know, if you're, you're, you're making love for a whole day, <laughs> then you have to go to set and work. <laughs> <laughs> Just to maintain that um, <laughs> concentration. <laughs> maintain the concentration. Get out of your trailer, Sam. Come on. Yeah. Where is the set? But we do, we do have, <laughs> we have a lot of physical scenes. <laughs> uh, yeah. well, that was a great answer, Sam. Thank you. <laughs> Well, my small physical demands that I am small and free. You know, I, 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 I only get to sort of hear in second hand the kind of wonderful things that Sam has to get through. But, uh, yeah, fighting, I suppose. Yeah, I do a bit of fighting. Smashing things. Hitting people. Um, getting hit over the head. You know, that sort of standing in a lot of muddy fields seems to be my thing. But, uh, yeah, you know, we, we've got some good people. And also, we have some good people... Um, from the physical point of view, in terms of stunts and stuff, that take us through what we need to do. Um, and uh, we've had a lot of fun, especially in season two. Yeah, have, have, have anyone read the books? I don't know if you've got any spoilers then. Um, yeah, we've got, we've got some great physical stuff in season two, especially towards the end of the season. Um, and actually airing them from next week, I think, is when we go back to Scotland. I think things really start to... This sounds strange. I, I think for me, um, some of the most like it's, I wouldn't exactly think of it as physically demanding, but I find this is like a, actually a serious uh, thing. But I, I wonder if you guys feel the same way. Being outside in the cold uh, <laughs> and with a lot of noise, those I find to be the most difficult scenes when when they're like on horses or something and like it's cold. I, I find that's the I find that to be the most difficult time to focus on the work, the task at hand. Um, but yeah, then there are those other types of special scenes that, that yeah. Sam and I do sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> they're easy to get. Yeah, they're easy. Do you find those easier to do? The, 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 yeah, you know what? I do find those somewhat easier to do because really? you know, a lot of times there's not a whole lot of speaking involved. And it's, <laughs> we'll come to that. Right accent. It's just. You know, well, I can only imagine what that's like. Obviously. <laughs> <laughs> I, I too have quite a few bedroom scenes. Oh, oh really? Oh, no, no, no. Uh, Silent one. Yeah. Yeah. We love you, Graham. Thank you, Graham. Thank you. Thank you. But um, a lot of action scenes, a lot of, uh, you guys do a lot of nights, we do a lot of nights. And so it's four in the morning in the rainforests of Oregon, and it's freezing and, and you're fighting, and, and you know, it's, you're earning your money in that moment. In that, in that moment. In the bedroom scenes, we're not really earning anything. Can I do anything? Is there like a stunt you've done that you really enjoyed, or like that? Um, I I love fight scenes. I, I try to jump in there as much as I can. Sometimes they won't let us because of safety reasons and because of timing. You don't always have a chance to do all your fight, but uh, as much as possible, I love to jump in there. Thank you. This has been bugging me since RainCon. We were talking about how you wanted to be a writer at first, and then you got into acting. I was wondering what were you writing what kind of stories? Uh, yes, that's true. I did want to be a writer before I was an actor. I used to write um, these uh, sort of strange adventure books when I was a kid. I, I, 
I wrote, uh, I wrote the very enigmatically titled The Island of Death when I was uh, 11. Um, I wonder what happened in that book. Um, and yeah, there was, and then I wrote a couple of other ones. And I've never, I, to be actually honest with you, I've never tried to get those published. In fact, I think my mum is the only other person that's ever read them. But uh, I, it was a great sort of outlet for me. But I got into acting, yeah, purely by chance through writing. I used to write comic sketches with a friend of mine and we would perform them because we didn't trust anybody else to do them and it was through that that I accidentally ended up in a play so yeah that, that kind of but the only thing that I wrote that we did do a lot I did a play about Vincent van Gogh uh, with, a, with a friend of mine we wrote it together and we performed that all over the world um, for quite a long time actually and so that was the last big thing uh, I've been toying with trying to write something about my experiences on The Hobbit, particularly, because that was such a life-changing experience for doing those three years. So I've been writing something on that, but other than that, sadly not. Thank you for putting my mind to rest. Uh, <laughs> okay, okay. Pleasure. Where are we going to copy of The Island of Death? <laughs> <laughs> it's, okay, it's available for signing later on, actually. <laughs> At a premium. <laughs> How long have I known you now? About seven, eight minutes? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Quite literally. Yes. We, no. But we, apart from Sam, I've never met Obviously. anybody here before. Did you I, watch your sh shows of Anton Camera guys? I haven't been able to see a full episode of either one of these guys' shows yet, but now that I've met them, I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, no, I'm not, I have not met anyone uh, on this stage or yeah. Jared and Misha, too. Like, that was just, that was all this morning. Yeah, that's yeah, strange, isn't it? It is odd. Yeah. But you, you, you feel like you kind of know people because you kind of cross somehow. I don't know. If you, maybe you don't even physically cross each other, but you always know someone. You yeah. have some people that tie you together. So it's kind of nice to finally meet them in person. <laughs> it felt like I knew Misha through William Shatner. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm a real great Shatner. Uh, just like how much he's on Twitter. It's ridiculous. <laughs> I think he's in, he's in Italy at the moment. I think. Yep, he is, and he is fantastic. Not a word against Bill Shatner. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I, 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 I love him dear. I think he's a, an absolute gentleman. And uh, we had a great dinner together uh, last month in, in Los Angeles. What were you doing with uh, Shatner? Eating sushi? Oh. Yeah. Yeah, that sounds about right. right. Yeah, it was, it was good. And a, a lot of sake, so it was... Um, <laughs> spectrum. I love sake. And tequila. Italian wine. Who's up, who's up next? Who is it? Me? Oh, here, yeah. Hello, guys. Hi. Thank you so much for being here, first of all. And thank you really for this. Oh, you're welcome. <laughs> yeah. What time is this one Okay, over? this question is for what time all of you. Over? Um, if you could travel back in time, like Claire, what age would you like to live in? Yeah. If you could travel back in time, yeah. what age yeah. would you want to go to? I've got an answer, I think. I, I, I don't, uh, you know, to be honest, I've thought about this a lot, actually. Yeah. Yeah. I, I don't, no, 11, in whatever period I would potentially travel back to, I certainly wouldn't want to spend more than a few weeks there. 11, I've got to say, I'm very, I'm extremely grateful for all the things we have no, nowadays. 10. I mean, imagine, you know, no, that says no electricity. 11, it could yeah. be fun. Or, uh, indoor, you know, no indoor plumbing, and that could be a problem. I don't know if that, how to say that in Italian, but um, <laughs> no air conditioning, you know, no motor vehicles, no iPhones. I don't know. I, I really, I'm, I'm glad to be living in this era. I think we, you know, we have so much. But I don't know. There's something about the 1950s that I love. I would love to be there for a little while, maybe. Um, maybe late 18th century. Uh, yeah, so that's my answer. <laughs> I think uh, either 1920s Paris or Rome. 
Oh, I want to wear a toga and just walk around. <laughs> Okay, you guys, I'm going to click off and I'll come back on in a little bit yeah, and catch the end of the panel. I would say Stay tuned for the next couple right. things. I would All right. agree with you, Bye. Brown. Um, and Elizabethan England. Uh, I think auditions, just think about auditions here. I, I know you try and do white from out of your memory, but I auditioned for Mamma Mia. And, um, I was working at the time in a, in a play and I had a tash. And um, I had to sing, obviously, one of the songs for the audition. And I said, I'm going to sing this, obviously, for you. Did the scene, I'm sing this uh, an octave lower. And the pianist was the music director. And he said, No, you're not. You're sing it as it is. So it was like a strangled cat singing. <laughs> Yes, the, the motivation of course. Can I just comment on European conventions versus... <laughs> Sitting. So I think you can think about, um, you know, multiple seasons or if you're part of a franchise, you're doing the same, even theatrical performance every day. You know, particularly though when you have new dialogue, I'd say uh, it's, it's just like, I guess you have to kind of treat it like life, you know. Um, there are always new, exciting challenges coming your way. And uh, I don't think life is, thankfully life doesn't get boring, I don't think, you know, as long as you keep the right perspective. So I think... Uh, just keeping the right perspective and enjoying what you're doing. I think that really, that hey, really everyone. helps just having fun. This is Jibland. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. I think you're one of the lucky parts of our Sasha job Rose. is that we get to Reed experience Kearney, the lives Graham of other McTavish, people over a period, long period here. of time. And um, certainly, you know, having played some characters for uh, a few years, you do, you you have that little shadow person in your life that follows you. And it's it's a great gift. It's it's wonderful. But you know, as, as Reeve says, it's it is like life and it and those characters, if you if you trust the writers, will um, will guide you through that experience. And those those characters do change. Uh, like people change. You know, things happen to them. You're and, welcome. Uh, you they get knocked and they, they, they have joy and they have disappointment and all those things. And it's uh, yeah, it's the wonderful aspect of what we do, I think. I think, like, um, what we mentioned about theater, theater is a great example of it because you could be doing something for months, which is quite literally the same words every single night. Um, and much like that, <clears throat> if you're doing a show for a long time, the things that I, I think you, you really, uh, where you find it, where you find all the nuances, when you're in the moment, you're just in that scene, and that scene just lives every day in a different capacity, you know, depending on what you're given and what you're doing. So it really lives like in those tiny little moments every day. And that like that's where it comes to life. I think it might seem repetitive when you're going to work every day or, you know, the lifestyle of it, but when you're in the moment it's completely different. Yeah, I think uh, I guess we're lucky on our show that we shoot a lot um, outdoors or on different locations. So um, it, it does feel different every day as well. Um, if we're shooting in a studio, you know, sometimes it can get it can feel a bit repetitive. But going back to the theatre thing as well, this is my first job that I really had where I didn't know where the end was. was. Um, with theatre, you know your your journey, your arc. Um, or if you're like uh, doing a one-off drama or whatever, you you kind of have a complete script. But 
we don't know where the characters are generally going. I mean, we have a rough idea, and obviously we have the books that Dan and Gabbard wrote, so I know what happens in the story, but um, day to day, it's, it's interesting to see where your character goes. And when you get a new script, you, you sometimes get a surprise as well, so that's kind of really exciting. And you all pass the exam. <laughs> <laughs> and I think the whiskey helped you. Awesome. <laughs> You guys don't call it Scotch. Is it because you're from Scotland? Or are you not from Scotland? Yeah. You are as well originally. Uh, uh, yeah. You know, well, I would. I just. Yeah, I call it whiskey. I don't. I it is the only kind. I mean. Yeah. Is yeah. That the only kind? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, yes. Yeah, well, I wouldn't. No, I've never referred to it as Scotch. No, I mean, I guess it is, but um, yeah, you get Irish whiskey as well, which is very good. But yeah. Not as good. You see what I did there? I was, I was actually trying to talk into the bar. He's drinking LaCroix. He already said it's his favorite. <laughs> Just carry on, Sam. Whatever you were saying, Sam. No idea. We've got three quarters of a bottle to go. We've got about ten hours left in our day. So yeah. <laughs> Bring on the wrestling. <laughs> Спасибо большое за вопрос. Вы Russian? No, Poland. Then I take it back. There's a couple of Russians that would probably appreciate that. But anyway, I dream role. You know what? Honestly, I enjoy doing period pieces. I really enjoy anything that. Uh, it's one of the best way. I was a history buff and a history student, and one of the, the greatest ways to to experience that is to enter these roles that take you to another epic or another time and era. And, and so, for me, anything period is a lot of fun. And then anything that is opposite. Okay, of the thing I'm we're going right to shut down is here. Always what I want to be doing. So right we'll now, do I'm that doing a lot later. Of All right. So, <laughs> <laughs> it's like menacing things, and so I. Love